What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me. Today's design is this moonlit desert scene. The canvas size for today is 2000 by 2000 pixels. As always, there's a link in the description down below to the palette, as well as the brush that you're gonna need for the stamp of the camel down here. And also below that is a link to my Patreon, where if you wanna get even more tutorials every single month, hit the link down there and show your support. And with all that said, let's get started. So once we're into our canvas, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and change the background color. So first thing we'll do is go up to our layers, background color, and then from our palette, we're gonna use these two colors for our background area. So we're gonna select the dark color on the top row. So the fourth color actually along and hit done. Next, what we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do is just pinch out a smidge. On this layer here, we're gonna go ahead and create our first little hillside in the desert. So we're gonna go up to our brush we are going to, under calligraphy, use the monoline brush, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to change our color out to this first color in these three stacked on the left-hand side. And this is going to be used for our hills. So starting for this one, we're going to start roughly sort of here, create a first peak and just make that drift off to the side. I'm going to increase my brush size a little bit more so you can see it. Now I'm just going to draw in a sort of streak like that where I can then drag and drop my color into the space underneath. And then you should just about be able to see that. If not, I will double tap to grab a lighter color. And that's typically the sort of shape that you wanna try and get with just a little bit of space on this left-hand side. Next, we're gonna go ahead and undo that so you can see the correct color. I'm gonna switch the color out then to the second purple in this stack. I'm then gonna to go to my layers and I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna drag that layer underneath the one that we just used. And then we're gonna create a second one, but slightly over here in this gap that I've used, and then it will drift off over to the right hand side. So starting here, we're just gonna create a little other hill and then a little curve there on the right hand side. And then because we went edge to edge with our line, we'll be able to drag and drop our color in like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and change out our color then to the next purple down in the stack. We're gonna go up to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna drag that layer underneath until it's at the bottom of our stack. So we're gonna start with a line over here so it drifts up and then goes on its way down just so we've got enough space for our Egyptian pyramids in the back there. So you can see the sort of swoop that I created and then drag and drop your color in like so. Now I'm actually sort of just adding my layers to the canvas at the minute and then I'll adjust them in a second. I'll probably move everything down. But the next step is to go ahead and create one new layer again and drag and drop that underneath. And then you're going to simply want to just draw in a straight line, which is going to be your horizon. So something like that. Hold your pen down and pop your finger on the screen. You'll get a nice horizontal line and drag and drop your color in like so. Now they are the same color for the minute, so you won't see them. So then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually now grab my horizon line that we just drew in. And I'm just going to bring that down into position. I want it roughly around about halfway and then I know where to adjust the other one. So I've dragged that down now and I'll tap on my cursor again. And then I know where to sort of drag my other layer. So I'm gonna grab my first hill at the front here. I'm gonna drag that down roughly to something like this is pretty good. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag my next hill down again, just down into position like so. And then I'm gonna grab my final layer as well and just drag that down something like that. Now we've added it all in in the area we actually want to add our hills in. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in some color in the background and then to the hills. So let's go ahead and let's create a new layer. And then let's go ahead and drag that all the way down to the very bottom. Then let's go to our colors. And then these two here are our background colors for our sky. So we're gonna select the bottom color out of this stack. Then we're gonna go ahead and draw in a horizontal line across the screen. Pop your finger on the screen to get a nice horizontal line. And we're gonna drag this color into the bottom half like so. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab our adjustments, Gaussian blur and layer and then swipe that from left to right all the way roughly till you hit about 60, 70% there. And that will give us a nice bit of glow in the sky. Now what you can do if you want to, you can just drag that up and you get a nice soft bit of purple in that sky there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in the orange glow in that sky. So we're gonna grab this color here on the second stack, the top color. We're gonna go ahead and on our layers, we're gonna create a new layer then we're gonna go ahead and grab our selection tool. We're gonna to choose the rectangle option and color fill. And then on this empty layer, we're simply just gonna draw in a rectangle across the screen like so, and then hit our selection when we're done. 
And then we're going to go ahead and hit our Gaussian blur again. So Gaussian blur and layer and then blend that out and that will give us a lovely symmetrical glow from the bottom there. And we can actually then grab our freeform option and scale that up if you want to. Now I would position yours such as that because next what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the process except we're going to go to our layers this time. I'm going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. So we've got two of them and then we'll change this one here to add and then we'll grab our cursor and the freeform option again and just scale this down so that mainly a little bit of lighting is just coming from in behind there underneath the horizon line. So you've got your new color here and it fades out into the other color and then into the night sky. While we're working on the sky, let's go ahead and create another new layer for the moon. So let's create a new layer, go up to your colors and double tap to select white. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab our monoline brush and we're gonna draw in a circle on the screen. It doesn't matter how big your brush size is, but just hold your pen at the end and pop your finger on the screen to get a perfect circle. And then drag and drop your color in like so. Then the trick to get rid of it into a sort of half moon, let's go ahead and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The top one, just simply invert it, which will invert its color. Then grab your cursor, the uniform option, scale it down a little bit, and then move it over to the right hand side and you'll get a nice crescent moon. You can then go ahead and select the shape of the black one by tapping on the layer and using the option of select. And then turn off color fill because we used that earlier, that's pretty important. And then go to the white layer, tap on it and use the option of clear. Then when we swipe the black circle away and delete it, we're left with just the moon. Then what we're going to do is we're going to swipe the moon to the left again and duplicate it. The bottom one, we're simply going to go ahead and grab that lighter color again for our glow. So in the second stack and drag and drop it into the shape. Now you won't see any difference because if I go to my layers, you can see there's a white moon and then there's a colored moon underneath and the moon. We're going to go ahead and swipe it to the left because we need two versions of it and duplicate it. The top one, let's go ahead and hit our Gaussian blur and layer. And then we're going to blend that out to the right hand side roughly around about 9 or 10 percent and then we're going to go to the bottom one out of the two and then go to adjustments Gaussian blur and layer and swipe that to the right hand side until you get something double the size so around, roughly around about 20 percent is good and then tap on your adjustments when you're done going back to your layers the top glow out of the two just simply change your layer effect on that one to add and then that will give you a really nice soft glow on that moon there in the night sky and now we can go ahead and add some stars in while we're here so let's go ahead and create another new layer let's then grab our white color and then if you've downloaded the stipple collection that's in the description down below we're going to use the light one in this collection and you want to vary your brush size for different sizes of stars so i'm simply just going to tap away with my brush size set to 20 percent at this point and that will give me some nice small collection of stars in the sky here i'm just going to tap away adding in all those stars into the sky just to fill out the space making sure you go down to your horizon line as well making sure to add in a nice collection up here and then the trick then is also to change your brush size up a little bit more so it's double the size now to 40 and i'll give you some bigger stars when you tap away in the sky and then go one size even bigger again maybe up to 60 and tap away giving yourself some nice big stars but only a few of them and that'll give you a nice varying amount of stars in the sky there. Next, let's go ahead and start to add some of this lighting now onto our hills in front and then we'll finish off with the pyramids. And let's go ahead now and look at our layers. So let's start at the top. This is our front hill. We're simply going to tap on that layer and we're going to alpha lock it, which means we can now only paint within the boundaries of it. Then we're going to go ahead and select our highlight color. And then we're going to go ahead and Change our brush out to the soft airbrush under airbrushing. And my brush size is set to, how big is that? That's far too big. Let's go for something around about, let's go for about 15%. And you wanna just sort of leave the peak of the hill, but add some lighting that tails off down here to the right hand side. So something like that looks pretty sweet. And then do the same on the other side of the hill as well, just to add in some nice lighting. And you can see I didn't go all the way down as to just fade that lighting out over to the right hand side there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and go to the next layer down, which is the hill in behind. And we're gonna repeat the process. We're simply gonna tap on that layer, alpha lock it, 
and then we're going to add in some lighting so just round the peak of that hill here going round towards this peak of the hill if you can do that in one motion that's even better and a smidge just over here and then we've got some lovely lighting on that hill too then I'm going to decrease my brush size down again to about 9% just to be super accurate and I'll turn off my horizon line for just a moment so that I can see the next hill back which is this one here and I'm going to simply tap on that layer again alpha lock it and then I'm going to add in a lovely glow just within that hill here adding in that color on that hill meaning that when we then turn on our horizon line we can now see the differences between the two hills and let's not forget the actual horizon line as well so let's go to that background layer tap on it and alpha lock it as well and then let's go from left to right increasing the brush size a smidge to about 12 percent and just going from left to right just adding in a little bit of lighting be super gentle with that and then you get a nice little glow on that piece there as well now the next point is to add in our pyramid so let's take a look at our colors we're going to use these two colors here for our pyramids this will be the lighter side of course and this will be the darker side you can start with either but i'm going to start with the shadow side first and then we're going to go to our brush library we're going to go to calligraphy and we're going to use the monoline brush and reduce that all the way down to one percent and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new layer let's just create it at the very top for the moment and we can move it afterwards and the first thing we're going to want to do is draw in our biggest pyramid so zooming in we just want to create a triangle so point upwards to a point and then let's go ahead and draw from that point making sure that the points of your lines all match up and are nice and tidy create that pyramid and then link up your lines like so and then drag and drop your color into that space and then what you want to do is create a new layer again but underneath our shadow color and then let's switch it out to the second color the one above it and let's go ahead and sort of copy this side line here so all the way up to that point and then i'm going to rotate my canvas just a smidge just so i can create the extra line just off of the side of the pyramid creating that point and then linking up our lines like so which is why we drew the one up the side there meaning we can drag and drop our color in and we've got our first pyramid now if you're not happy with your design at all you could potentially grab for example your cursor and then your distort tool and you can maybe just arrange these points here in a slightly different way meaning if I go back to my original shadow layer and go to distort as well and drag that point across you may get an angle in which you're more preferred in terms of your pyramid so that's one pyramid done but we're not going to repeat that multiple times we're simply going to go up to our layers now I'm going to pinch both of those together and then we're going to create our arrangement so we're going to swipe that to the left and duplicate it this is the front runner the one at the very top here so we're going to select the bottom one now i'm going to grab our cursor i'm going to grab the uniform option though i'm going to scale it down and just move one over to the right hand side here just in the back there and then we're going to go ahead and repeat that process until we've got five pyramids so we're going to swipe on that layer to the left and duplicate it the smaller one either one of them grab your cursor and then we're going to drag that pyramid over to the left hand side like so and then we're going to go ahead and create some smaller ones in the front now so let's swipe that one to the left and duplicate it the top one out of the two that we were just working on we're going to grab our cursor again scale that down but move it in front till we get some smaller ones off to the left hand side here something like that looks pretty good and then one more in behind that so we swipe on that layer duplicate it the bottom one out of the two grab your cursor scale it down and then move that over to the left hand side just a bit bigger than that just in behind there and then hit your cursor when you're done and we've got our arrangements our pyramids just sat on the right hand side now if you're not happy with your arrangement of your pyramids in terms of their size what you can do is just simply on the layer you've got selected it will be highlighted blue but you can select other layers by swiping them also from left to right and you will highlight them blue and now I've got all five selected I can grab my cursor using the uniform option to make sure that they stay in their sizes we just scale them up and move them into a position that we're happy with like so and maybe even I'm going to add a slight rotation to mine but something like that is good now looking at our layers we want this hill here to sit in front of this pyramid so I'm going to go ahead and grab that layer 
of these five layers of our pyramid and hit group. I'm going to collapse that group down and I'm going to drag it underneath until we're just in front of our horizon line here, meaning now that they will nicely tuck in in behind here. Now what you also want to do is bear in mind some shadows. So for this one, we're simply just going to go ahead and in that group, we're going to create a new layer and drag it underneath the pyramids that you've got. We're going to go ahead and grab our dark purple that we use for the background color. So this one here on our palette, we're going to grab our selection tool and we're going to use the option of freehand and turn on color fill. Now what you'll be able to do is you need to mimic these points and create a shadow like this and link up your shape and it will add that shadow in in terms of it will fill in that shape. Now at that point is when you can go ahead and grab your cursor and distort it and move it around and scale it up as big or as small as you need to. Maybe you need to grab the distort tool and just drag that out to the right hand side a bit more but making sure every time that your points of your triangle that you created are linking up to the points of the pyramid. So something like that looks pretty good in terms of the shadow being casted. I might actually just grab my cursor and the distort option one more time and just sort of pivot that round a little bit and then hit my cursor when I'm done. So my angle is nicely facing away from the moon. And that's a little bit too dark for our shadow. So I'm gonna grab my layer and I'm gonna lower the opacity down. I'm gonna lower that down to roughly around about 70%. And then we should have our pyramid shadow on the ground there as well. Next, we're going to go ahead and duplicate that shadow and add it in all the other places as well. So let's go on that layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it, grab your cursor and then move it over to the next mountain, making sure to grab your uniform option and just scale that down so it fits that mountain as well in terms of its size. And again, linking up your points on the edge of the mountain like so. And then we've got these three here to do as well. So we simply go back to that layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab the top one still in your cursor, and drag that over to the right hand side here. Now this one here is a funny one because I've dragged it across. It would also have an effect on the side of this pyramid here. So what we should do really is let's go back up to our layers. We're going to find that pyramid which should be at the top of our group of pyramids. And we're going to create a new layer and we're going to tap on that layer and we're going to clip it. Now what we're going to do is grab our selection tool and because we've still got the same rules in place we're going to tap where that shadow should touch and then we're just going to sort of go up to roughly say here and then create a triangle or a shape just to cover that edge and then tap on your selection when you're done. So that kind of looks now like that pyramid is casting a shadow onto the side of this one and then grab our layers and then lower the opacity down as we did with the other one to about 70% and that'll add a nice casted shadow on the side there. Let's just revert back to what we were doing. So we were duplicating the shadow and adding it to the edge of these pyramids. So we're going to go back to our layers. We've got these shadows down here. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it, which will be the last one that you're working on. Grab your cursor and the uniform option still, and then just drag that to the point. And we could scale that down. And then something like that is good. And it will hide in behind that hill now. And then the same process that we did here, we duplicated the shadow and moved it to the bottom of this pyramid. And then we added a casting shadow. And that's the same that we'll need to do here as well. So we're going to go to our layers, swipe it to the left, our shadow again, and duplicate it. Just so that we can add one to the bottom of this triangle. Now you don't really need to be very accurate at all here. Because if yours is like mine, you've only got a small little place there to add in a shadow. But we are going to add a shadow onto this one here. So let's go back up. And then we're going to find that pyramid that we need to add the shadow onto by turning on all of our pyramids on and off. And it's this layer here. So we're going to tap on that layer and create a new layer. We're going to tap on that layer and we're going to use a clipping mask. And then we're going to go ahead and go back to our selection tool and do the same mimic shadow that we did over here. So just create that point off on the side there by creating a triangle. And then go back to our layers and then lower that opacity down to 70%. And then we've got our pyramids all added in there with some shadows. And then the final little step to add in to our design is to go up to our layers. And then let's go right to the top. Let's change our color out then to the dark purple here on the top right hand side. And then let's use the camel brush that I've put in the description. It's a stamp 
and it doesn't matter what your brush size is mine's about 50 percent i'm going to go to my layers i'm going to create a new layer i'm going to tap on the screen to add my camel in and then grab my cursor and scale that down until we're happy with the size and then you can position it where you want it i'm going to position it a bit smaller and something like that looks pretty good maybe slightly off to our right hand side and then what you can do is go ahead and grab that layer swipe it to the left and duplicate it then the bottom one out of the two i'm going to go up to our cursor and you can flip a layer vertically by tapping on this button here and then drag it down and then once all of the feet match up you can simply grab your distort tool and then drag that off to the right hand side here just in the direction of the moon so something like that looks pretty accurate and then tap on our cursor when we're done and then if I pinch with two fingers and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this simple desert tutorial. If you did, drop a like down below. It helps the channel out an awful lot. And as always, if you want weekly Procreate tutorials, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. As always, be sure to share your designs with me on Instagram and TikTok. The links are both in the description down below. And if you want even more tutorials where you can get three extra tutorials a month, take a look at my Patreon in the description down below. I'll throw my patrons' names up on the screen where they also get extra access on my Discord server as well as sneak peeks of upcoming designs. So if you'd like some extra tutorials, hit that link down below and show your support. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.